everybody how are you all doing this is probably the fourth or fifth time i've tried filming this maybe this time is the right one i don't know fingers crossed but i've been asked to make this video quite a lot as a kind of part two to the video i made a while back for uh, when i planned the trip the first time i went to japan so first time solo travel planned everything by myself from a to z and it was about a 20-day trip where i traveled from in different areas of japan while being on a cute budget and i'm going to call it a cute budget because throughout this video i'm going to be using the word low small restricted way too many times so for the time being i'm calling it a cute budget so i made a in-depth long ass how I plan my trip, where I speak about budget, I speak about Japan Rail Pass, I speak about well, everything I could think of at that time I put in a very detailed step-by-step -step how to type guide video so i suggest you go see that one first before seeing that one because it really is more of a guide whereas this time it's more me talking you through my uh my planning the second time around it's more like my experience what i've learned things like that whereas the other one is more like more of a guide so link is there in the description also so i suggest you start with that one but if you clicked on this video expect can see how I planned the trip for the second time around where I stayed in Tokyo solo travel again but it was a smaller trip for 12 days and like like I said only in Tokyo then you're in the right place I will however be referencing referencing the um, the old video quite a lot because I mean I do follow my own advice and uh, it is even to this day kind of still relevant camera focusing issues aside i still think it's a pretty good video so i will be referencing that quite a lot but i've been asked to make this video so i aim to please i hope i do a good job i'm already rambling uh but let's just move on because i i don't want to start again <laughs> need to move on right now so planning japaniku 1.5 as most of you know by now because i've been repeating it from day one from as early on as like maybe the first video i made about japanico 1.5 you will know that this trip was kind of a spontaneous trip saw the email alert from this website called scott's cheap flights where you register and they send you like emails with crazy deals like sometimes airline mistakes and like just really good flight deals so i got a, a deal for a direct japan flight and i was like oh my god this looks amazing i crossed check with uh, the hopper app which is the app i used last time check if it was like really the as good as it said it was it was the case and i definitely yeah i went for it i lived <laughs> I went for those tickets, I paid for it with my savings, aka money I did not have um, in the hope that I would have enough time to save up for the rest of the trip I mean I managed to do it the first time and this was a bit of a smaller trip so yeah, I really thought I was going to be able to do it I really was overly optimistic and if you've seen the video I uploaded the, the last time I was gonna say last week but it has been a while the last video I uploaded, you know how that turned out for me uh, and if you haven't, long story short, the lack of funding caused me to cut corners where I shouldn't have, making things really uncomfortable <laughs> in the long run. So actually that is one point I raise in my how-to video, is that sometimes you need to choose between comfort and money, and uh, yeah, comfort should sometimes, like more than sometimes, go first, but I'm getting way ahead of myself back to the plane tickets that i bought with money i did not have bought them directly through the ana website direct flight round trip played around with you know the dates to see what was going to be suitable for me what i thought i was going to be able to save up for in the amount of time that i had which was just under five months which might seem like a lot but it went by super fast and it came up to, and I'm going to be rounding up most of the, the prices here, it came up to around 600 euro for the flight, which is decently priced uh, when you think about it, but it did mean that I was starting my travel budget at zero, which I do not recommend. Overly optimistic, yeah, I recommend you stay regular optimistic. That makes no sense. Oh my god. 
let's move on <laughs> that is the budget for the plane uh, so in the how-to video I then go on to speak about the uh, Japan rail pass issue which is something quite big that you need to decide on uh, fairly early in your trip before you start really planning anything else you need to decide whether you're going to be getting oh my god the road works I'm sorry about that uh, you need to decide fairly early uh, if you're going to be getting the Japan rail pass it's a big chunk of your budget so see how where are you going to be traveling uh, if you're going to be taking the, the, the bullet train, the Shinkansen, uh, how much of it you're going to be taking it. Anyway, take all of your travel data, I, I talk about that in the video, take all of your travel data and put it into a JR Pass calculator. See if it's worth uh, putting a large chunk of your travel budget into that. The first time around I bought it, it was awesome, it was amazing, it was one of the best decisions I've ever made because I used it so much and I could travel through Japan like so easily. But this time around, since I knew that ultimately I was going to be staying in Tokyo, that it was going to be a budget-friendly trip, I decided to really rely on uh, my Suica card, my IC card, where you put money on it and you use the subway like regularly, you just scan it and it takes away the amounts that it needs to take away from the card. I have no words today, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm gonna be doing my best. So instead of having a separate travel budget, I decided to um, add my travel expenses into my end daily budget. And to save up on transportation, I uh, really planned routes and itineraries that I was going to be able to walk to most of the time to really cut costs when it came to transportation. And I will go over that a little more in a minute. Uh, that's how I cut costs. I also um, researched all the available passes in Tokyo. There are tons of them, like all the different subway uh, services. There are more than one in Japan. There are quite a few actually. They all have passes. They all have uh, really interesting passes. Some of them for tourists like you and me. Really good deals. I looked into that. So should you. There might be something that is perfect for you. But uh, ultimately, since I was walking most of the time, maybe taking one or two subway rides a day, sometimes just walking. So I really was able to save um, by planning my routes. So really see what, how you're going to be traveling, where you're going to go, and either create a separate transportation budget for yourself, or maybe include it in your daily budget if you don't think you're going to be uh, moving around that much like me. You need to also see uh, things that you're going to have to take, whether you want it or not. If you're landing at Narita, for example, and want to get into Tokyo, there are different possibilities of trains and buses. I think mostly, I mean taxi and everything, but these are the two main options. The train is so much easier, but maybe if you're comfortable, you might look into the bus. That's something I really had to weigh the pros and cons because the train is around 4,000 yen, like starting at 4,000 yen, whereas the bus, uh, round trip was 1900 yen, so it's like half the cost. Uh, the only thing is that buses are a little more complicated maybe to find and to figure out, especially coming back to the airport and to find a specific bus stop. And that can be kind of nerve-wracking if like you're not used to traveling alone and figuring things out for yourself. So I did my research and I felt comfortable enough this time around to take the bus out of Narita and then back into Narita. Um, I did, however, map every single thing out, every single detail. I had a map of the airport floor with little arrows telling me this is the counter where you buy the tickets and then this is the way to the bus stop that will bring you in to Tokyo. Um, I didn't do any reservations. That is something that maybe you want to take into consideration, uh, especially when going back to Narita because there were a lot of um, reserved seats so I had to wait for a second bus but it was well early so that was fine and yeah for the way back that was the same I, I wrote every single step down how to get from my hostel to the bus stop in Tokyo station and then how like how long which terminal uh, which floor I was going to arrive on everything I get really nervous when I don't know what's happening and going on maybe you're like me this is why I'm making the video if we're if we're the same type of person write everything down it will take like a load off your mind if you feel like you're comfortable enough taking the scary shuttle bus oh yeah i took the case shuttle bus for those who were wondering there are different buses but that's the one i chose that's the one i found that was more efficient and the counter was super easy to find when i arrived uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm blabbering on and everything that's coming on off the top of my head is like going there I hope it makes sense. I'm so sorry, but um, 
like I said, this is more uh, the second time around thing. If you want a step-by-step -step guide, go to the previous video because it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> this is just what I did this time around. Took the bus. Yeah! Managed to take the bus. <laughs> I even went as far as going to find the uh, bus stop in Tokyo Station a few days before having to take it just to be sure that I knew exactly where it was. So yeah, if you're a nervous traveler, especially if you're alone and you're in a foreign country and you're jet lagged and tired and you, you get your wires crossed because you're abroad. I don't know why our brains do that. My brain does that. If I'm far away from home, everything just like flips over for some reason like yeah anyway enough for that the next point is accommodation and i've gone over that quite a lot in the past video where uh how i made my decision but uh mainly i knew i was going to be stay staying in tokyo at that point i knew that i even though i wanted to take some trips outside of tokyo the end budget wasn't going to be as good as I hoped it was quite restricted and I think that's why I made the decision is because I saw my budget was so low and I was like oh my god I need to cut corners and uh, I went for a hostel because the first time I went to Tokyo I stayed 10 days in a hostel it was a dorm style hostel whereas this time it was more of a capsule style hostel that might have made the difference I don't know it's hard to tell why the first time it was okay and the second time it wasn't I decided I was going to stay in Tokyo if I, I was going outside of Tokyo it was going to be day trips not like moving around too much I was going to be put for 30 nights and uh, I did not sleep a full night in, in 13 nights <laughs> which uh, yeah lesson learned comfort or money you need to make a decision and yes I wanted to save a few bucks and it was a good hostel I know it's a good hostel but it wasn't suitable to my needs I wasn't comfortable um, I was craving like my own space and I, I was just going out of my mind after a few days so my recommendation is know yourself know what you need uh, maybe you're someone that's super chill by staying like in small areas with not that much comfort maybe you're fine with that or maybe you think you're fine with that and you'll have to learn the lesson the hard way like i did but um take things into account uh, know what you're willing to sacrifice at the time of the that last trip uh, our Airbnbs were in a weird situation. There was that uh, admin issue that they had to resolve. I'm not sure it had been resolved by the time I was making my reservations because a lot of them closed down. I think it's back to normal now if someone knows the situation with Airbnb in Japan. Um, if I had to go again, and I will be going again soon, I hope, I will definitely be looking at Airbnb as an option. Of course, there are different options, uh, hostels like uh, homestays, hostels, business hotels, Airbnb, there's a lot, go see the other video, I talk about that in detail um, where I did travel with hostels and Airbnbs but this time around I really did compromise my comfort for money and even though I did save a few bucks, I wouldn't do it again I would definitely choose something more suitable to my needs to have a better experience so learn from my mistakes choose something that is suitable to you so plane accommodation those were the two main expenses for me because i didn't buy the japan rail pass add on travel insurance and then what i had left in my bank account was divided up to create my daily budget which was approximately 50 euros a day and in those 50 euros i had to count food transportation and well obviously fun shopping uh, sightseeing views museums temples uh, more eating because I definitely ate my way through Tokyo on those 12 days <laughs> for sure so 50 euros it seems like a lot every day I mean I definitely don't spend 50 euros a day here um, for sure but as a tourist on vacation is not a lot it does go away very fast and you have to take also into account but that was like that's my own like decision I really wanted to have a uh, Japan souvenir, a permanent souvenir from Japan, which is this tattoo that cost me 100 euros. So what I did was spread the 100 euro cost across a few days where I diminished my daily budget. So towards the end of the vlogs, you may notice that I cancel my Yokohama trip. I don't do as much as in the previous days. And sure, the fatigue thing was definitely one of the factors. But also, I think that after Kamakura, I was so broke. Well, on the first time around where I also had, I set myself like a 50 euro approximately 
50 euro um, daily budget I had the luxury to stray because I had a, I had a backup I just put 50 like as a rough idea of what I should try to stick to I didn't really stick to it I had a lot of fun I could um, like I said I could stray for it if I wanted to buy something I really wanted I could stray for it from it if I had an extra adventure that I wanted to add to my experience if I saw like I had the luxury to stray whereas this time it was 50 don't stray because at the end I saw how much was left in my bank account and I was like okay if there's an emergency now this is my emergency fund I cannot touch that and it was even though I loved the experience and it was fun and I spent a lot I had I had a lot of fun spending shopping eating calculating constantly and being like, really stressed about money it did take away from the experience and I don't want to be like poor, 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 poor me I couldn't go as much I couldn't do as much shopping as I wanted in Japan I couldn't eat as much as I wanted in Japan no it was fun I, I'm no complaints no regrets it's just that um, for you my recommendation like my advice would be don't spread yourself too thin because if you're spending while thinking about money it is not stress it does take a little from the experience you do feel a little guilty being like oh I don't have that much money maybe I shouldn't buy this no like I said in the previous video when you're in Japan have fun you, you should just yeah have fun have money to have fun this is something I really need to remember for myself for next time that yeah I had the budget to survive but I didn't have enough to really really have fun which is a shame so don't spread yourself too thin mm -mm. oh my god I'm starting to sweat I don't know why I always end up filming these videos on free and heat waves it's like 36 degrees right now Celsius and I am dying. Anyway, um, it's weird for me to be speaking about money so openly. It, I guess it does make you feel a little um, uncomfortable. I don't know why. Uh, money is so subjective. Like 50 could seem like a, a huge amount to people. To others, it'll be like, wow, you lived on 50. What the hell? That is crazy. So you do you be you. Take away what you want from this video. I'm not telling you how you should spend your money, what you should do. Like. This is how I did it and I'm telling you that for me 50 a day was too stressful. For sure next time I go to Japan I, I want to have a much larger, larger budget for, well I mean for food but mainly for fun. More fun, more experiences, like less restrictions. Like if I want to take a day trip, an extra day trip on my, on my, during my travel stay, that's what I want to do. But yeah, moving on to the next portion and that's where it gets a little repetitive with the last video is how I plan the trip. Loud! I'm in a very animated area of, uh, of the city, <laughs> let's just say that. Um, how I plan the trip, yeah, and this is how it gets a little rep repetitive because I did exactly the same thing as the first time. So I read a ton of guides new guides from last time like extra guides i watched more videos and i um basically wrote everything down and i wrote them down first by area of tokyo it was easier this time because i was mainly in tokyo and then i divided the activities by type of activity so food shopping sightseeing um what else did i do i put little stars next to the ones i really wanted to see like my top priorities i wrote down which subway station was the closest like maybe there were more than one but the station closest the exit i mean do i need to say the exit again i need to make a know your exits t-shirt at this point because that's how uh, i personally find exits so important because the subway stations are complete labyrinths and you can go out one exit and be like it'll be fine because the next one will be right over now know your exits wrote down the exit sometimes i wrote down the opening hours if it feel like if i felt like it was relevant um what else oh sometimes i wrote down like the speciality of each restaurant uh sometimes the guys like recommended like oh this is the best place for omurais for example so i wrote that down so that i knew i had an idea where i wanted to eat uh and this might be a little ott but i also color coded the subway stations that were uh repeated more than once so i could have an idea of the area like if i go to this station i can 
hit these spots if I go to that station I can hit these spots uh, ultimately I guess in the end I did end up pinning everything in uh, two of the main apps that I use for traveling which is which are uh, maps.me which I speak about in my previous video uh, is an app you can use without the internet if you download all the maps before and obviously Google Maps those were the two main things I used pin everything down so when I was in an area I could just like zoom out or zoom in and see oh like this is close this is close this is cool so that was really helpful and as mentioned previously I every day like every evening or every day I sat down and uh, really planned my approximative I mean I was stuck to schedule but I wrote down like possible itineraries for each day that way I could walk without like losing too much time and having to take transportation co cutting costs so I mentioned that before so that really helped me uh, see as much as I wanted uh, each day and uh, fill up the vlogs and have a lot of activities uh, so preparation write everything down in my journal and that really helped me out so yeah same as next time I really recommend you get a journal where you write everything in there whether like your brainstormings your expenses your reservation numbers your itineraries right everything down because like i said when you're abroad your brain doesn't work as well as it does when you're at home and once you're, you're back home that little journal is a great souvenir for you to fill in like maybe you could journal on location or you come back add drawings stick things in there like receipts and tickets because you're gonna accumulate a lot of tickets from everything you see um I really recommend you do that like this is the one I had the first time like this big this big boy uh, that really survived uh, a lot of things I love this I love looking back at this journal it's like it's so so cool it was my first trip and I saw so much like the best trip in the world um, <laughs> like the big boy trip and this like is the, it's the little little brother trip this is the second one where I also added um, all this Cool mem memorabilia. I've never word used that word in my entire life, but I think this is the right way to use it. Just put everything down in here. Really helpful. All the all the addresses. I put an envelope at the end for the maps and uh, yeah. Same as last time, but I really, I really love these journals and I love looking back through it and they help me plan these types of videos because it's been a few months since I've been back and I've forgotten a lot, <laughs> so really helpful and helpful to plan like my next trips because I, I write everything down in there. So yeah, I think this is all I can say for this video, um, I know I went on a, quite a lot, I'm sorry, it's hot and I'm very nervous so I speak very fast. But I hope it made sense. I hope that there are two, three points that you can take from this video. If not, please go check out the how-to uh, guide I made a few, I think a year back. Anyway, it was for the 2017 trip. So I think that video will make much more sense than this one where I was just like speaking a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but I, I really don't hope that you could take something away from this video. Of course, if there are things that I left out, Oh my god, if there are things that I left out, leave it in the comments below. I'll try and respond to it in a, in a next Q&A video. Oh my god. And uh, if you have any other Japanese related questions, leave them down below also. I'll, I think the Q&A video is what's coming up next. Leave me all your questions. Uh, I will be making like an Instagram story type thing where you can fill in your questions too. So follow me on social media and for updates. And uh, yeah, I think that's all. Let me do some quick shout outs. First of all, to the t shirt of the day, which is the Drink Cup Buttercup vending machine uh, sweater, also available as a t shirt on my Japaniku merch store. Oh my god, the noise! On my Japaniku merch store, it's available. And I chose that. Uh, design today because I'm really craving for some reason I'm really really craving a, uh, a sicken sickeningly sweet sickeningly sickeningly sweet uh, royal milk tea a cold one probably with this weather definitely a cold one and I really want that from a vending machine um, parched mouth dry lips yeah vending machine of the day song yeah so that's shout out to the video of the day i'll put all the links below if you want to buy it for yourself and of course i want to give a special shout out to the patrons who have supported this video so that is 
Devil Khan and Ken Okimura. Thank you for your support this month. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you, obviously, to everyone who has supported me in any other way by watching the videos, by sending coffees. I mean, you guys are amazing. I'm very, very blessed, very touched. And of course, thank you for all the birthday wishes. You guys are so sweet. I'm so grateful for you. Um, I felt very loved on that day. So thank you so much. So, so, so much. Okay, I've gone on for way too long. I need to end this video. So, again, thank you. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. And I'll work you all. Well.